That's part of our session. If you, how many people started their homework? Did you? Okay. You probably got to the last part of like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that has to do with equivalent rational expressions. Now, they're not hard things. You just kind of have to be shown how to do it once or twice. And then you're like, oh, yeah, that's not a problem. Here's how you do that. I'll start with something, something very simple. Most of the problems are going to look something like that. You have a complete fraction on the left, an equal sign, and then a missing part on a fraction on the right. Here's what equivalent rational expressions are trying to get you to do. All right? They're trying to get you to have underlying concepts to do the next section, which is to add and subtract, which means what do I need to multiply by in order to get an LCD. So basically what we're doing is we're saying here's one fraction with a denominator of 5, Here's a fraction with a denominator of 15. What I'm trying to do is make these equivalent fractions. Basically, this is the LCD that you would find. How do I make this one into this one? So the question is, here's how you answer all those, those questions on your homework. What did you do, by multiplication, to get from this denominator to this denominator? How, what did you have to multiply by? OK, so from here to here, you're saying, I multiplied by 3. Everyone agree with that? Okay. The only thing you have to do now is say, oh, okay, since I multiplied the denominator by 3 to get from here to here, what I have to do to the top is now multiply this by 3. So how much is the 3 times 3? Okay. And that's what goes here. Okay, you completed that fraction now. And you'll see that 9 thirteenths is equivalent to 3 fifths. So how you answer this question is you find out how they got from here to here. So you, you, you do that in your head or on, on paper. You find out how they get from here to here. Then you just do the same thing to the numerator. And that completes your problem. Does, do you understand that? OK, that's, that's really what they're trying to get you to do. Now, of course, we're not just going to deal with numbers. We can deal with stuff like that. It's not any harder. You just have to figure out what they're multiplying by. So down here, we're going to write how in the world they're getting from 5y to 20x squared y squared. So we have to multiply. Answer the number first, the 5 to the 20. What do you multiply by to get from here to here as far as the number goes? You all see the 4? 5 times 4 gives you 20. OK. Also, what else is over here that you didn't have over here? What do you need to multiply by? X squared. Great, x squared has to be in there somewhere. Okay, fantastic. Uh, anything else? Y. Why? Good, yeah. Y, awesome. So 5y, we got 4x squared y. We'll double check that, okay? 5 times 4 gives you 20. 5y times x, oh, that's where x squared's coming from y times y gives you y squared. You all alright with that? So you ask that question, how do you get from here to here? And then what you're going to do, take this piece of information you just found, and just multiply the numerator by that. And that will give you your new equivalent numerator. So we're going to multiply by 4x squared y, exactly what you just saw. Let's do the math. Uh, if you multiply 2x times 4x squared y, what are we going to get? 8x cubed y. Perfect. You can always check your work. If you simplify this one, you must get this one back. And, and you will. I mean, if we simplify that, you're going to get the 2 over the 5. The x's, notice you have 1x on the top. The y's, you'll have 1y on the bottom. So it does simplify back down if you wanted to check your work. But that's how you do it. Uh, what we're doing here is purposely unsimplifying fractions. That's what we're doing. Purposely unsimplifying them. And the reason is you have to find common denominators. And you're going to see that in the next section. Well, let's try a few more. Really get the hang of this, and then we'll move on. I'll show you how to use this idea in the next section. What in the world? Oh my gosh. 
Now, this might not be so apparent to you, like how you get from the first denominator to the second one by multiplication. It might not. You're like, wait a second. It's got two terms. That has, that has two terms. How do they get from here to here? However, what's one thing we did in the past that really helps us see what we need to multiply by? In the last, the last examples that we did, what did we do first? Pretty much in every single case we've done in this class. Hmm? No, what did we do first? Before we even... Distribute. Not distribute. The opposite of that. All good ideas. We are, but in order to get the parentheses around the factors, you actually need to factor it, right? You have to factor it. So, what we need to do first in order to see what we're actually multiplying by, because you can't just do this. You can't most times. You can't just go, okay, how do I get from the 3y to the 15y? Because there might be other things going on there you need to see. In this case, that is actually going to work. Uh, but we want to factor to really see that. So the first thing you're going to do, just like you did over here, just like you did in every other problem we've done before in this class, you're going to factor the denominators. Okay? That, that's the minimum that you do in, this, in, in here is you factor denominators every time. So we're going to factor the denominators. Does this one factor? Does this one factor? Yes. What? Perfect. So instead of the 15y plus 10, we'll factor 5 out, and we'll get what? 3y plus 9. If you factor, it becomes a whole lot easier to see what you're multiplying by. Do you see that? I mean, really, you can see how do you get from 3y plus 2 to 5 times 3y plus 2. And it's really a trivial question at that point, right? Because you're like, oh, how do we get from 3y plus 2 to 5 times? 3y plus 2? You know, oh, I must have times to by 5. That's exactly what you did. Do you, do you guys see what I'm talking about there? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, all right. So let's multiply by 5, and that's going to give us 5 times 3y plus 2. If we do the same thing to the numerator, we have to do the same thing to the top as you do to the bottom. That's how these fractions work, because you're really multiplying by a fancy 1. What are you going to get up there? Yeah, that's it. How do people feel okay with this so far? Okay. Let's look at one more. Do you guys need examples to do on your own, or do you feel okay enough on, on this? Okay. Feel okay? You sure? Okay, so with, with our simple, well not simple, but with our single terms and single terms, we're basically just looking what do you need to multiply by. When you have, almost a disaster, when you have more than one term, factor first, factor, wouldn't that be funny? That, that would not be funny at first, but like a year later, maybe like ten years later, <laughs> on my deathbed, it'd be pretty funny. So if you have more than one term, you're going to factor. It makes things a whole lot easier to see. And then we just write what we need to multiply by. Are you with me on that? Let's try one more together. Maybe I'll give you one on your own after that, and we'll be, we'll be good to go. Okay, at first glance, this one looks kind of involved, right? But I'm going to kind of suggest to you that this sometimes is easier to do than this one, as long as you know how to factor, because you're, you're going to see right away what you're, you're missing. So let's take a look at this. x squared minus 25, you should know how to factor that, right? Mm -hmm. You see that all the time now. That's going to be what? Great, yeah, that difference of squares. So we'll factor that first, that's what it says. Now these are already factored, that's, that's awesome. Um, and, and here we really can't factor uh, x cubed type terms, I'm sorry, type polynomials very easily unless they all have an x in common, which these wouldn't. So it'll probably be given to you factored already. That's great. Over here we'll do x minus 5, x plus 5. And the question is, how do you get from these two to these three? Now, as soon as you've already had them factored, it's pretty easy to see. It just says, what are you missing? I mean, what don't you have here that you do have over here? What, what don't you have? X minus 3. So that's, that's what you multiplied by. Mm -hmm. well, that's not bad. 
once it's factored, it's essentially given to you. I mean, that's what was up here too, right? It just it gave it to you. It said, oh, I don't have a 5 over here. I do have a 5 over here. That must have been what I multiplied by. Not your head if you're okay on that. Okay. So whatever you do to the denominator, we're now going to do that to the numerator. And we'll have 3 times x minus 3. You can leave it like that, or you can choose to distribute. Uh, when we get to our actual adding and subtracting in the next section, we will be distributing because you're going to have to combine like terms. Okay, that's the, really the only time we distribute after we factor this, because we need to combine like terms. Okay, give one of these a try. So the first one, because we're dealing with single terms up there, single, uh, not, not a whole bunch of terms stuck together with this subtraction, we don't have to factor first. There's nothing to factor on the first one. However, on the second one, you are going to have to factor that first. So let's do that. Figure out what your equivalent expression is going to be. Once you get the hang of this, it goes pretty quick if you know how to factor this. So on the first, our top example here, we need to determine how to get from 5y to 35xy squared. All, all of a sudden I see the 5 to the 35, that means I'm multiplying by 7. That's got to be in there. So our 7's first. Take care of those numbers. Also, I notice I have an x here that I didn't have here. That means I must have multiplied by an x. And finally, I see a y squared when I only had a y to begin with. That means I must have multiplied by y. How many will found 7xy? Oh, good thing. Okay, we multiply the top by the same thing. That's our numerator, 7xy. Uh, the numbers give us 21. The x's give us x squared. The y gives us a single y. Did you make it that far? Good for you. We just multiply our 3x times our 7xy, exactly what we found down here, and we get the, what the problem is going to be asking for in your homework. Okay, last one. Of course, we do have to factor. Factoring in this case means this, this is taken care of. This one over here is what we're worried about. You'll set your diamond problem up. No extra step. It's kind of a nice one. I'm thinking 3 and 5 somehow. 